Right, morning everyone. I've um I'm just gonna show you my um my carrot cake recipe. I've had it for a very long time and I used to cook it for WI market and I used to do a batch of three so I had to condense the mixture and just make do one so it took a bit of twiddling but I've done it and hope you enjoy it. Anyway I've just mixed up my um eggs and brown sugar which is two eggs and let me just check um 75 grams of sugar um because my mixer makes such a rattle i couldn't have it on and talk at the same time i've also grated me carrots which is about 180 grams um give or take the old bit of carrot doesn't really matter so that's all ready so now i've got some sunflower oil 100 ml already let me joke i'm going to put my mixer on and just slowly put it in so that it doesn't curdle or anything the mixer on slowly hope you can still hear me and there it goes um, this is now nearly done right i've not done this before so you have to bear with me And then I'll add the carrots, which are already grated. You can grate them a bit finer than mine. I've done them quite, quite coarse, but you can do them finer. But I find it just as easy, and it saves a bit of time to do them like this. Them all in there, like that. I can remove my dog. She has a fetish for carrots, so um. And I'm folding those in nice and slow, like that. It doesn't take very long. And then, what you do then, I don't sieve my flour, I never do not now because I think it's fine enough, unless you're doing a Swiss roll or something. That's my flour, which was, I can never remember, 150 grams of ordinary flour. You can use wholemeal, but it makes it a bit heavy and I've yet to try a gluten free one because you have to tiddle around with that. Um, and a, a teaspoon of cinnamon, teaspoon of bicarb and a little pinch of salt. I'm just going to tip that in. There we go. And I've got 100 grams of sultana. But if you just, just separate them with your fingers first and so they don't all stick together in a lump. And we tip those in as well. There we go. Next one there. Just slowly, it doesn't take long at all. Once you're um, I'm never usually like this organised, but I've weighed it all out for for the demo. But um that's done. It smells gorgeous. bits off of there. It's quite a, a wet mixture. As you can, can see, I don't know if you can see. And then all we do, I've got a loaf tin there and I, I, I use these little liners but you can just use grease proof paper um, with a bit of butter on the bottom just to make it stick. Um, it's quite a deep cake. But um, it's just just nice for a treat in these bit gloomy times sometimes. So um, yeah, and I think everybody should be able to cook. So if we can find easy recipes for people to do, that's um, that's good. You should be happy when you're cooking. And yeah, but I will do other things. I don't live on cake. We don't live on cake here. It's just, I've always liked to do it as lots of people who know me obviously do know. But, um, and I've got a dog spying on me in the corner. 
because she has a fetish for carrots, but she's not allowed in this bit, obviously, while I cook. So there we go. I've got it all in there. There we go. And just make it level. And then put it in the cooker, I think. I'll have to give you the proper temperature when, I, when I've when i sorted it out because I haven't got a conventional cooker. There you go. Right, we're back again. I've just now, I've got, now I've got three carrot cakes. I've got one I've just iced so you can see. And I've got one waiting to be iced and the last one is still cooling. So, um, yeah, right. third attempt. But um, anyway, I've just weighed out um, 60 grams of cream cheese. Any cream cheese is good. It doesn't have to be a, a branded one. Um, and 60 grams of butter and 120 grams of icing sugar. Now you shouldn't need to sift the icing sugar, I never do, um, but mix the butter and the cream cheese together first just to get them all blended. And then it just comes together quite easy. Don't need a mixer, because with icing sugar it will shoot everywhere. So just do that really, really and beat it a bit. And Oh, I didn't tell you the temperatures of the um, oven. 170. It was 170 degrees C or um, 325F, just in case. But I will put the recipe up as well, so you've, you've got that there. I'm sorry if it seems a bit heavy, but there you go. That's just me. Right, that should be nice to... And all you do is just put it on the cake. You need to keep this cake quite cool and it will keep, but you have to keep it somewhere quite cool because especially in the summer, it's quite moist. So there is a danger of it going, going funny if you um, get it too warm and leave it. So this is quite lovely. It's quite thick. But because the cake, as you can see, is quite deep, so um, it needs to be quite a thick icing. But there we go. Just put that on there. This is so lovely. You don't have to be artific artistic. Just put it all on. Make a pattern. Leave it to settle a bit and you'll be done. It's just something nice, especially this time of year, especially when it's snowing outside, um, to munch, because it's a little treat. And it will serve quite a few people because you only need a small piece. So just do that, swirl it around, make sure all the, the edges are covered. There you go, don't let it dribble down the side. Let it cool, cool right down, else it'll all sink everywhere. And that, and I reckon that's that's a nice treat because there's no, no additives or artificial stuff in it. It's all quite natural. I know it isn't the most healthy cake, but you know it's a cake. So there we go. There and for not many, well, it's taken me a long time, but it won't take you long to do. Um, you've got a nice tea time treat. So, as I say, we will get the the proper recipe on the website, and the, and hopefully you'll be able to push those closer. So hopefully you can see. You'll be able to do one and um, enjoy it.